Hello and welcome to the Knowledge Center stage here at ITRON Utility Week. My name is Adam Manik. I'm joined by Phil Beecher, who is the President and CEO of the Wysun Alliance. Phil, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for um, um, agreeing to speak Yeah, and, uh, and thank you for being here. Now, you, um, just to dive into it, you announced a certification program we yesterday. Did. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and then we'll talk around some of the things that it's trying to solve? Certainly. So the FAN Field Area Network Certification Programme is the culmination of quite a long period of work, several years of work. The, the work started really within the Standards Forum, within IEEE and IETF, and then Wysun Alliance. Um, we're an industry alliance that takes standards, um, we create interoperable profile specifications and then we deliver a testing and certification program. So as you're probably aware with standards it's very difficult to make interoperable products. Um, so Wysun takes those standards, we make sure that there is a single... But, but isn't the definition of a standard to enable interoperability? But the process of developing standards quite often ends up with um, this melting pot of different pieces of technology. So it takes an industry alliance to basically clean everything up, get a single interoperable uh, profile out of it, which is what Wysun's done. And the certification yesterday was for a particular aspect, wasn't it? it was yep, so there. this is for our field area network program. Um, field Area Network is dis uh, basically designed for very large-scale outdoor IoT applications, particularly appropriate for utility industry and smart cities. When you're building it out, and I know you said it took, I think it was about six odd years before we got to this, uh, this space, and you're taking different standards and putting that all together, isn't that quite a long time to get somewhere. I mean, can the process be sped up, do you think? I mean, because it's one of those things where a lot of things are moving really, really fast and it feels like a bit like regulation that the standards are now not leading the charge, they're just keeping up with it. Um, I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, one of the fundamental parts of Wysun Alliance is we uh, have chosen IPv6, which is definitely here now and for the future. So that's, that's pretty fundamental. Uh, the security architecture that we're using is definitely scalable and future-proof. Part of why Sun Alliance is about looking not just to now but to the future and evolving the technology but doing it in a way that provides interoperability, doesn't strand devices. So people can deploy equipment now that's why some fan or certified um, they know it's interoperable and they know we have a roadmap into the future. So where do you see all of this going because you know when I first started commentating in this industry there seemed to be a proliferation of standards and in some cases even utilities had built their own proprietary standards. You know are we converging if you pardon the pun onto one IP centric approach? Um, uh, I certainly hope so. I believe we are. I think there are always going to be, uh, there's always scope for different standards at the physical layer because you have different um, characteristics. So Wysun's currently wireless mesh architecture based on open standards. The standards are global, so we're not just relevant for North America, but basically everywhere in the world. But we're also um, working with Powerline Carrier um, which gives us the ability to create heterogeneous networks. And then, but core to all of this is IP and IPv6, because using that you can then exploit um, a lot of technology development that's been scrutinized by a large community of experts. Talk to me about the security aspect of it as well because it's one of those things that the more we join these networks together, you mentioned PLC and that being joined to WASH, MESH and Wi-Fi, there is this huge proliferation of IT and comms which is touching almost every part of the 
physical network, the critical infrastructure, and security is a big yeah. issue. I mean, how are you guys looking at that? So we started with particularly with critical infrastructure networks in mind. So we use um, device authentication using standard base certificates, X509 certs. We use EPTLS for uh, securing the authentication uh, layer. And then we also um, use encryption and frame integrity checks so that all messages are secure. Um, basically private and also it, it, it avoids things like man in the middle attacks. All of this really comes out of, um, is derived from IT type security architecture. So you have the scalability that people know, you already have the knowledge within organizations. So it's not to say that why some networks necessarily use the IT infrastructure, you can create a similar infrastructure for OT, but the skills are transferable, um, the maturity of the technology is there. And does it give any other benefits as well? Because, you know, when we look at the security side of things and you hear about, you know, there was a recent case where there was a, a honeypot put onto a substation and it was up for auction within like three or four hours or, or, or something like that. I, you know, how how do we start building into the network the security we need for all these attack vectors? We're using um, certificate-based security. Uh, within those certificates, it's perfectly reasonable to do firmware signing. So even if a device is compromised by physical tampering, for example, then when the device repowers and tries to join the network, it's recognized that it's been tampered and you just end up with a device not available. So things like Mirai attack just can't happen on a properly secured network. And, and when we were talking off air, you were talking a little bit about also having the ability to deploy AI onto the networks and, uh, and things like that. I mean, is that unique to this IP-centric world or...? So, you're probably aware that within the security industry generally there are a number of AI type tools looking at intrusion, looking at anomalies. If you're running a totally IP network, then those tools just propagate across the whole network. So even into the wireless part of the network. So, so it's just a win-win situation really. And just, again, going back to the certification program that, uh, um, that you launched, what are some of the outcomes that you're hoping are going to come out of that certification program? I mean, obviously, you know, you launched it here at ITRON. Um, ITRON are obviously behind it. Um, but there must be a reason for, you know, or a destination that you're seeing as well. So with Wysun, as I said, we develop technical profile specifications that give you a, um, the ability to create interoperable product. The certification program describes how we test those, um, how we certify, leading to true interoperability for the utility industry and uh, smart city type industry, which is something we've had for a while with things like Wi-Fi Alliance, um, but it doesn't exist within this very large-scale outdoor IoT. And that's what Wysun is driving yeah. towards. So, so all of these things that have been rolled out up until now, you know, they, have they arrived at their own interoperability? Are you, are you know, or, or is this going to accelerate the adoption? So that's what I'm trying to get at, you know, because if you, so this if you build a standard, you, you do it to either grease the wheels of something or, or accelerate something, because, or, or are, you, are, you know, are you here despite all the interoperable rollouts that have already happened? So there are already many deployments that are standards-based that are Wysun compatible, right. but they're currently not interoperable okay. because they don't f fully implement uh, a commonly agreed standard or suite of standards or specification. So Wysun has developed that. The testing and certification is the endorsement from the Alliance that should give customers confidence that they can buy 
one product from one vendor, another product from another vendor, and they will seamlessly interoperate. So that's that's the real thing to to, to let give customers the choice of yep. I can buy the right product for my needs, but it will sit on this network because it's been certified. Uh, exactly. Right. Um, so that's the benefit for the customer is customer choice. Mm. You can buy products from many different vendors; they'll all interoperate, mm. sit on the network. The other benefit also to um, pr producers is that when you have a standard and a specification, um, you, an ecosystem of uh, suppliers develops. So the people that are experts in switch reclosers don't suddenly have to become communication technology experts. They can go to another vendor, get the communication technology from there, um, the security problems are already solved for them, so they can focus on their particular product, um, include something from another vendor, and you very quickly create an ecosystem. Is this a real, then a real problem right now that, that you know, this ecosystem doesn't exist? And is, is that causing things to be slowed down? Do you no, feel I that think, this will accelerate things? So I think currently, certainly with iTron, um, they have their partner program that actually overcomes some of that. But this will increase that ecosystem. It will just speed things up, it will give a lot more um, flexibility to other product vendors. And is it, is it going to drive down costs in terms of component costs and uh, you know, give, give the end customer more choice? Oh, ultimately yes. I mean we have, uh, within Wysun Alliance, I think we already have five or six RF Silicon vendors who are providing, providing interoperable solutions. Um, Wysun has 190 member companies who cover the whole ecosystem. So ultimately it's about cost reduction to the customer, the end customer. Where are you guys going next in terms of you know, uh, building out the standards in particular? Because we were, we we're talking off air that you know, this industry is accelerating at a pace. Yeah, the smart city conversation is becoming more and more prevalent. It's going to need the interoperability and interconnectivity. Are there other areas that you feel still need to be tackled? We're certainly not going to be complacent. We're not standing still. We've launched the certification program for the first release of the field area network. We already have a market uh, requirements document agreed for what comes next. Again, these, it's an evolution. It's not complete redesign. So people can deploy Wysan fan products now um, yet know that we're still moving forward. So, and we'll just continue to do that. Technology advances, customer requirements advance. Um, our idea is we just keep pace with you, it. You keep pace with it and uh, yeah. you keep serving the market. Phil, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, thank you as well for watching this uh, Knowledge Center interview here at iTron Utility Week.